Nuclear bombs. They're scary. They devastate everything around them, and sometimes pilots may not make it out alive. To think this first one is the least powerful on the list, though. MK-14 Nuclear Bomb The Mark 14 Nuclear Bomb, also known as the MK-14, was a thermonuclear weapon developed in the United States in the 1950s and the first solid-fuel staged hydrogen bomb ever built. The US only made five of these by 1954 as an experimental weapon, putting them to the test during the Castle Union nuclear experiment in April of that same year. The roughly 18-foot-long bomb was intended to be dropped by either B-36 or B-47 aircraft and was made using a non-radioactive isotope of lithium. It slowed down its fall using a parachute drop. The MK-14 was successfully detonated with a yield of 6.9 megatons during the Castle Union nuclear test. It was found that the bomb was around 328 times more powerful than the atomic bomb dropped over Nagasaki in 45. Despite having undergone successful tests, though, the MK-14s were eventually abandoned because 5 megatons of their overall output came from fission reactions. The weapon was also regarded as extremely dirty due to the tremendous amount of radiation dispersed. By 1956, all five MK-14s were recycled and used to build the bigger, far more potent MK-17, which we'll probably get to here in a bit. MK-16 Nuke the Mark 16 nuclear bomb, also known as the MK-16, was a sizable thermonuclear weapon based on the Ivy Mike hydrogen bomb. As the only thermonuclear bomb ever created to utilize cryogenic deuterium fusion fuel, the weapon was pretty unique. The bomb, which weighed 42,000 pounds and measured almost 25 feet in length, was incredibly huge due to the number of vacuum flasks needed for this kind of fuel. As a result, the only American aircraft that could use the weapon was a B-36 that had been properly modified. Despite being produced in January of 1954, the bombs were decommissioned by April of that same year as a result of the Mach 14s and other solid-fueled nuclear weapon successful tests. The success of Castle Bravo's shrimp gadget rendered the MK-16 somewhat obsolete despite the fact that tests of the MK-16 were intended to take place during Operation Castle. Nevertheless, due to their anticipated output of 7 to 8 megatons, it would have been about 333 times more powerful than the detonation over Nagasaki. Current estimates place the MK-16 series of bombs among the 10 most potent nuclear weapons ever created. B-53 Nuclear Bomb The B-53 was a nuclear bunker buster weapon created by the U.S. military in the 60s. The initial version of the bomb was created as a reaction to the Cold War era bunkers dug out for Soviet leaders. The bomb was intended to do severe damage to underground centers using a surface blast to collapse the surrounding Earth onto its target, providing the U.S. a decisive advantage in the event of nuclear war. The weapon had a yield of 9 megatons, despite being significantly smaller than nuclear bombs from the 1950s. A B-53 detonation at this yield might demolish any building within a 9-mile radius, with severe burns potentially extending as far as 20 miles. Researchers estimate that casualty rates within 2.25 miles of the explosion might be close to 90%, depending on the topography. In the 60s, more than 340 B-53 bombs were created, with 50 of them being used in the Titan projects to create the W-53 nuclear warhead, which was based on the B-53 specs. After several safety concerns were raised about their security and confinement, the final B-53s were disassembled in 2011. Mach 36 Nuclear Bomb The Mach 36, also referred to as the MK-36, was a high-yield thermonuclear weapon that was created in the 50s. The MK-36 was regarded as the United States government's first dry nuclear weapons test, employing a multi-stage fusion device similar to the MK-21. The huge MK-36, which could explode with a yield of 10 megatons at a length of over 150 inches and a weight of around 17,700 pounds. The bomb was intended to be airdropped gently over its target using two separate parachutes, giving the bomber pilots enough time to avoid any potential danger. Between 1956 and 1958, the American military produced more than 940 of these bad boys, of which two distinct models, the Y-1 and Y-2, were created. Sadly, as was the case with the majority of the early nuke weapons used by the U.S., the MK-36 was swiftly replaced by the significantly more potent, and deadly, B-41 warheads in 62. Man, at this point I'm starting to wonder how big of a budget the U.S. military has. What with these quick replacements on years worth of research? But that's probably a question better left for later. Ivy Mike H-Bomb 
The Ivy Mike H bomb, short for hydrogen bomb, was a thermonuclear weapon that was first set off by the US on Anahuataca Toll on November 1, 1952. The Richard Garwin designed nuclear weapon was very large, measuring 244 inches long, which when converted is about 6.19 meters in length and 82 tons in weight. After detonation, Ivy Mike generated a fireball with a radius of 2.1 miles and a total yield of 10.4 megatons. The bomb's mushroom cloud ascended to an altitude of 56,000 in less than 90 seconds due to the explosion's intense force and strength. It wasn't impressive and disturbing enough, the plume also reached a maximum height of 135,000 feet. Furthermore, nearly 35 miles from the explosion site, radioactive material was reportedly failing. This radioactive fallout persisted for several months. Einsteinium and fermium, two new elements formed by the explosion, were produced nearby the detonation site as a result of the bomb's intensely concentrated neutron flux. The Ivy Mike was approximately 472 times more devastating than the 1945 atomic bomb dubbed the Fat Man, which exploded over Nagasaki. Mach 24 Nuclear Bomb the U.S. military created the huge thermonuclear weapon known as the MK-24, also commonly referred to as the B-24, sometime between 1954 and 1955. These weapons, which were built in less than a year, were roughly 105 in number and were conceptually based on the Castle Yankee series of bomb tests. The bomb itself was enormous, measuring over 296 inches long and weighing over 42,000 pounds, making it the third largest nuclear bomb ever built by the Americans. Researchers thought the bomb had a total yield of 10 to 15 megatons despite never being formally tested by the government. Well, tested aside from a prototype device in 1954. This was because the Castle Yankee test, which used a similar design, produced 13.5 megatons when it exploded. Due to this capacity for destruction, a 64-foot parachute was created especially for the Mark 24 to slow its ascent and give the bomber crews plenty of time to flee the blast zone. Despite being decommissioned soon after it was created, a Mach 24 casing is still on display at the Castle Air Museum in Atwater, California. MK-17 Nuclear Bomb U.S. military created the MK-17 Nuclear Bomb in 54. It's the first in a mass-produced series of hydrogen bombs. The MK-17 was a very potent weapon with a yield nearing 15 megatons but it was phased out in 1957 because of larger, more effective prototypes under development. Other considerations were also for more portable, smaller bombs developed in the late 50s. The MK-17 was renowned for its size and weight, weighing more than 41,500 pounds and measuring more than 7.52 meters in length. Between 54 and 55, some 200 MK-17s were created, along with a number of modified B-36 bombers. These bombers were created specifically for the MK-17's unique requirements. A 64-foot parachute was also specifically created for this bomb, like many others on this list, to delay the bomb's ascent to Earth and give bomber crews time to flee the blast radius. A number of Air Force museums across the nation, including the Castle Air Museum in Atwater, Cali, and the National Museum of Nuclear Science and History in Albuquerque, New Mexico, allow visitors to see five of the MK-17's casings up close. Now it's time for the day's best pick. May not be the largest bombs ever created by America, but it certainly was the biggest nuclear test conducted by the U.S. government. TX-21 Shrimp The TX-21 thermonuclear bomb, sometimes called the Shrimp Bomb, underwent its initial test on March 1, 1954, Bikini Atoll in the Marshall Islands. This gigantic bomb, which weighed around 23,500 pounds and is over 179.5 inches long, was initially intended to be a 6 megaton weapon. It actually used lithium deuteride to fuel its fission reaction. The explosion of Bikini Atoll, which generated over 15 megatons of destructive energy, was roughly three times the expected yields because of the mistakes in its design. The nuclear weapon generated a 4.5 mile wide fireball that could be seen from more than 250 miles away within one second of its explosion. The typical mushroom cloud spread over 7 miles and rose to 47,000 feet in less than a minute. Radioactive waste contaminated about a 7,000 square mile area of the Pacific Ocean. Due to strong winds during the test, radioactive materials were also discovered for several weeks afterward in Southeast Asia, Australia, Europe, and the southwestern U.S. Despite not being the largest nuclear bomb ever created by the American military, the TX-21 was the biggest nuclear test ever conducted by America, bar none. B-41 Nuclear Bomb 
The United States developed a three-stage thermonuclear weapon known as the B-41 nuke in the early 1960s. The device's maximal output was expected to produce up to 25 megatons of devastation upon detonation, making it the most powerful bomb ever built by Americans. The B-41 used nuclear fusion to produce its enormous yield by using lithium-6 enriched deuteride as its fuel source and deuterium tritium as its primary fuel source. With or without parachute delivery, the enormous B-52 Strata Fortress and B-47 Strata Jet were built to carry the B-41. The reason for that was because it was 12 feet long and weighed 10,670 pounds in weight. Between 60 and 62, about 500 of these enormous bombs were created before they were ultimately deactivated in July of 1976, following its replacement by the B-53. Researchers contend that this bomb was the most effective thermonuclear weapon ever developed, keeping the highest yield-to-weight ratio of any weapon built while being smaller in yield than the most powerful bomb on our list. The B-41's output was roughly 1,136 times more powerful and deadly than the atomic bombs dropped on Japan during World War II. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take five seconds to complete. So, here's the deal. You just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell, and you will get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. Sarbama. The Tsar Bomba was the most potent nuclear weapon ever constructed and was dropped by the Soviet Union over Novaya Semla on October 30th of 1961, just north of the Machakin Strait. The bomb was carried by a modified 295V Soviet bomber and measured 26 feet long by 7 feet wide, weighing about 27 metric tons in total. The Tsar Bomba's enormous size and devastating power, about 50 megatons, required the construction of a unique parachute to slow the bomb's ascent, giving the bomber crew enough time to fly around 28 miles away before the Tsar Bomba exploded. To the crew's immense surprise, however, Soviet scientists estimated the pilots only had about a 50-50 chance of surviving once the blast had detonated. Despite the Tsar Bomba's immense strength, Soviet scientists considerably reduced its output by removing its uranium-238 tamper before delivery. Sarbama's initial yields were estimated to be about 100 megatons. However, measures were taken to reduce the Sarbama's capabilities because of the potential for severe radioactive fallout and the likelihood that the bomb's delivery crew would die after detonation. See you all next time!